Hi everyone, we are back and today we're going to learn a little bit about computer vision. So let's pull up our image of Einstein, looking nice right there. Uh, we could actually use a couple of functions. So um, we can actually use this function called image identify. So it looks and actually tries to find and actually it'll output essentially the highest probability of what it can identify in an image. So for example, I image identify and I can find that Einstein and it's going to look through it. Let's see what we got here. Einstein is and again, unfortunately, there's going to be a little bit of a delay in a lot of these. Um, so while we do that, actually, let's look for, we all enjoy lab puppies. Um, let's look at an image of a Labrador puppy. This. Look at this cute guy. So let's go ahead and grab this. <laughs> um, I'm going to do puppy. Puppy is this here. And you can see, again, this is going to be very RAM intensive, especially if you're just starting your notebook like I uh, have been doing. So that image identify feature may take some time uh, to run. Um, so again, it's, it's kind of communicating with the repository and you can kind of see, you know, so if your computer is taking some time, a lot of these computer vision uh, problems, it, it may take a little bit. I'm actually doing it on my computer that's more for video recording and uh, it's not my, um, quote unquote workhorse computer. But there we go, we see it's a person. Great. That is a, again, a good start. We could also do image identify for puppy. And then it may take a little while. Retriever, so see it's, it's starting, once we start to communicate, it'll actually uh, move forward there a little bit better. Um, we could also see again, you know, what's the really qu quickly identifies that there's really 100% probability that's a person. Um, we can actually see, all right, Einstein, image identify, focus it. Basically, instead of a word person, we want to see effectively, you know, this should give my top 10 examples, but really there's only one example. We could look at a car. Um, and there's lots of different entities. Um, and we can actually go entity. And you can kind of look up, you know, we can say country. We can do, there's lots of, Lots of different types of entities. And again, you can um, basically look at some of the scope, um, <laughs> the scope that's available. Entity, you know, you can say uh, word or entity, let's say planet. Let's see if we've got this. Planet. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna have to do entity. Maybe it's planet, entity about word. Yeah, see, we're gonna have to, we'd have to play around a little bit. Um, you could say entity list or entity value or entity name. Uh, actually, we can do. How about a volcano? <laughs> Again, I'm just playing around here. Volcano. Uh, yeah, so it's not a valid option. Anyways, um, so we can look at, from the cars, again, a list of the 10 most probable. So um, we can actually see for Einstein, convertible and versus Model T, ambulance. So you can see, and again, it's looking at characteristics of the image. Obviously, this is just a silly example, but um, if Einstein was a fruit. Uh, so again, you can look at concepts. There's lots of different, again, you can kind of dive deep into here. Um, also, we can see notable person. So there is a repository in Mathematica that has essentially kind of the notable notable historical people, you know, um, that we can kind of look up. And based on the features in the image, we can see what are the possibilities. So unfortunately, this particular picture of Einstein um, leads us to some erroneous examples. Again, we need more data, more, more images, and more characteristics in order to kind of uh, fine to this. So this is going to be all part of the process of when we actually start to do computer vision and machine learning of training essentially our neural network and training uh, basically the computer to identify. Um, speaking of computers, Alan Turing. Um, you can also look at what's the facial age uh, of this person. Again, based on data, this is already, you know, we're essentially accessing a little bit of the neural net right here. Facial expression. Neutral. Einstein, very happy. We could also classify language as well. So um, so language, so this is again, I'm specifying, okay, classify language and then the statement here. So, oops, let me do here. 
I could say uh, me, uh, uh, oof, my Spanish uh, <laughs> uh, my Spanish class uh, is uh, really failing me at a second. Uh, how do you say? Let's see. There we go. Good. Um, we could also do. I could say. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh, that's not correct. Um, how about uh, I'm trying to use uh, basically a Korean term. Ooh, nope. Sorry, I'm just interested in. I want to try to get a Korean. Hello. Oof, I don't like that. Anyways, um, I probably need Korean letters uh, to get that to work. Um, I can also classify essentially the sentiment of the statement. So, I love Mathematica. Positive. I hate Mathematica, which is something we never say. <laughs> I neutral. <laughs> but anyways, uh, it's just a silly. You can also classify flags. So um, we can look at images, find the country. Again, looks pretty good, uh, accurate. Um, we can also extract essentially faces from images. So I can do this for Einstein. I could also do this for puppy. Oops, puppy. And pull out the little puppy's face. Um, so I could find faces here. You could also, you know, from our, I'm just gonna, bring this in because it wasn't defined image one equals this so you can actually find out other characteristics so for example the age again estimate the age emotion um, again gender you can see again some failing um, again uh, it's outdated as well uh, Einstein again fear <laughs> fear uh, again sometimes it cannot uh, it can be a little bit inaccurate um, I pulled this from uh, some of my students from the previous year. So you can see anger, indeterminate, you know, sad when that's clearly a smile. Again, the resolution of the picture is important as well. Um, you can highlight, uh, you know, once you find faces that you can actually blur the faces or I could actually, instead of blur, I could sharpen. Sharpen. Actually, that's not a graphic. Uh, how about... So I could do blur, I could do other um, other basically uh, functions that can be applied to here. Um, and here's actually a very interesting one. So let's actually now start to train to recognize or assign essentially, assign a classification or data to these faces. So for example, if we wanna build something in computer vision um, where we can start to kind of train our machine to identify, we have to feed it some data. So here's a picture of Einstein, and I'm going to assign these faces, random guy one, random guy two, Einstein. Um, we could then put that here and put and build essentially this classifier function. So face recognize, and we're basically feeding in this face, this face, this face, goes to this string kind of characterization here. So this face, we apply this kind of classifier. So we can build essentially this classifier function. And then, so it's gonna take some time here. And then we'll also, and the, the whole point of it is, I want to build a classifier function where I've said this is Einstein. And then now I wanna feed another image and see if this classifier function from a random, a new image will actually recognize and say, hey, this person is Einstein of the faces that are in this photo. So that's effectively what we really want to, we want to do, that's what we want to kind of train it on. Um, so we'll see if it works. Um, and then hopefully we can get some. There's my classifier function again. It's gonna take some time, especially when you're first communicating essentially with that repository. So I've got my classifier function. So now I wanna see, can this classifier function determine that this is Einstein? Unfortunately, no. Why is that? Well, the facial features here are quite different from the facial features here. I mean, it may seem, obviously your eye can clearly see it's the same person, but we need to feed more data into this. But 
if I were to actually feed this photo that's very similar to the photo that we traded on, there we go, it works. And the same thing for you know E2 we can identify here. Let's expand this a little bit further. So I've found a couple pictures of Norm Macdonald and I've also found a, a picture of Conan O'Brien. So I've got three photos here, I've got one photo of Conan here and then I wanna train uh, and basically do this face recognize again. So I'm gonna say my string is gonna be norm, 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 Conan. That's my string. This is my N1, so I found my faces, I've applied the string, and then I'm gonna create my classifier function. Good. So now this is a very, again, a different photo of norm. Let's see what we get. We got it. This is a nice test because I've got Norm here, obviously, and then two other people that I haven't trained on. So let's see how it works. Excellent. We don't know this is David Spade. We don't know that this is, um, oh gosh, oh, uh, Dennis Miller. Uh, and then, but we do, we find Norm, which is fantastic. Um, we can also look at, when we kind of classify um, Einstein, or if we want to look at uh, basically notable people, we could actually create this kind of cool little word cloud as well. Um, this is just kind of more for fun. Um, you can see the most probable, least probable. Um, and actually we see here, we actually get our Albert Einstein for that E3. So that's a better uh, result. And these are kind of fun to do for yourself as well. Now, we can actually take this even further. So let's say I want to build a classifier function. I love Supernatural. So I want to be able to recognize Sam, Dean, and Cass. So we could use this function web search. So we could do web image search. We feed it effectively, um, basically the search that we want to do. So we want to find 10 images of Supernatural and it pulls 10 randomly. Um, I want to now basically from my web search, so I'm gonna web search Supernatural and I want 30 images and I want you to find faces and associate those faces with Sam, Dean, Cass. Um, and so you can see it's pretty accurate. So, but there's a couple of errors here, right? Like this is obviously Dean. Um, the rest of these are Sam. So sometimes you may have to kind of go in and clean this up if you want a better result. This is obviously Dean, um, this is not. So again, you'd have to clean this up, but this is a good starting point to kind of train CAS. It's actually quite accurate. This is not, this is not. Um, and it shows you essentially the data that it pulls and it's, it's finding. So let's do this and train. This, this may take a little bit, um, but let's see how it works. And this is a really nice way. Um, again, you can do this manually, but you can kind of use this to reduce a lot of your legwork. Um, and it's a really nice function that you can use for basically implementing um, this kind of computer vision so that we recognize, you know, computer vision, machine learning, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, we're trying to find this association. We're trying to train this, you know, neural net as well um, to recognize these things in the images. And I mean, again, we're doing some fun, silly examples, but obviously this is of critical importance for a lot of engineering fields. Um, uh, a lot of medical applications too, you're trying to essentially recognize um, different aspects in an image. You can correlate that to disease progression. Um, so it's a very, very important field. It's one where computer science has traditionally dominated, but it's one where engineering really needs to um, basically implement more, and it is already being implemented heavily in a number of research fields, a number of areas. So um, hopefully this will give you a nice good example. So we've got this, we've got our classifier. We're looking pretty good. Again, some errors in here that we may want to clean up if we were to run this again, but um, so far so good. So let's see if it works. So obviously I've got uh, Sam, Dean, uh, John, but I don't want to find that. So we could actually, and actually I can do faces here, it's just showing this again. So let's go ahead, actually I could run. Let's run my classifier, and then I could do my face recognize for my classifier function. And it's just, and again, there's some, you know, some errors here, but for the most part, we're, we're looking pretty good. So we found our faces, we can build our classifier function, and then we've got that now. Now we can test the image. And what do we find here? 
We miss Sam, but again, why could that be? Well, it's probably because of this cut here, but we got Dean, so good. What about this one? Sam, Dean, Sam, Cass, Dean, Crowley. So, Sam, Cass, uh, again. Oh, we got Sam, Cass, Dean, good. What about here? Looks nice. So, uh, have fun with that. Uh, there'll be a problem set question on this. Uh, and yeah, hopefully this is a little fun example. And then next time we're gonna get into neural networks and machine learning, uh, kind of again. So see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.